Hello, my name is Tim Concert, Product Marketing Engineer, and today I'll be discussing our new addition to the SDM32 family, our SDM32L5, which continues a low-power footprint with enhanced security features. This is our first SDM32 based on Cortex M33, which includes trust zone hardware security features, which we'll highlight a bit later. The L5 continues the low-power DNA of our SDM32 family and adding a bit more DMIPS core model performance increase in comparison to our standard Cortex M4. To get a better view of the device, let's start off with a block diagram of the new STM32L5. As mentioned before, this device embeds ARM new Cortex M33 with up to 512 KB dual bank flash and 256 KB SRAM. The L5 has a rich features spanning with connectivity portion. We're offering new USB Type-C and PD power delivery support, CAN FD, and Octa Spy while still supporting standard features such as I2C, SPY, and USART. As for the encryption block, we are added features such as private key authentication, along with on-the-fly decryption, which I'll highlight and go deeper in a bit later. The analog front end is quite extensive, which we are offering two ADC blocks and are available with dual competitors and op-amps. Cameras on the L5 is quite extensive, as these support various functions such as compare capture, PWM, and can be easily cascaded with one another. For the L5, we're offering seven device packages total. Standard packages such as the LQFP, QFN, and BGA will be available for our mass market customers. For customers developing a design with a very strict size constraint, a wafer level chip scale package or WLCSP will be made, be made available with a 0.4 millimeter pitch. In addition, crypto and non-crypto versions of the device will be made available to the public. Continuing on with the low power footprint, I wanted to highlight the power modes of the sm 32 l 5 device. Here is a breakdown of the various power modes and the respective consumption numbers. The device can support up to 110 megahertz operating frequency while consuming just 60 micrograms per megahertz. I also wanted to highlight our stop mode, which offers the largest number of wake-up sources, but with the SM block will retain with a consumption of just three micrograms. As with our previous device, the lower power state you are enter, the less wake-up sources are available in your application. In addition, please find the associated wake-up time for each of the low power modes to the left of the graph. Now we'll be doing a deep dive in the specific IPs or peripherals have been improved on the SM32 L5. First, we will start on the SM32 L5 system architecture and peripherals. The SM32 L5 increased performance is highlighted by the 8K iCache, which is brand new to L5 architecture. The SM32 L5 allows for quite a bit of remapping logic of either external or internal memory, which can be cached as well. I want to highlight the diagram below. It shows the bus measures of each of the bus master slaves that can interface one another to the associated data path. Next up, we'll be discussing the new on-the-fly decryption, or OTF DEC, which is a new feature on our L5 microcontroller. In certain use cases, applications use external flash to either store data or extend the program memory code. These external flash devices can be easily moved and soldered to new boards to be read out or exposed connectivity signals can be probed and sneaked on. We highly recommend that data on external flash are fully encrypted to prevent data lines to be spied and read out. However, decrypting data in an application increases the access and latency time. The SM32L5 and its on-the-fly decryption sit right above the OctaSpy peripheral. This allows data and or code to be read and decrypted almost simultaneously with very little or low latency. There are no wasted cycles after decrypting data and rewriting to the flash. After the on-the-fly decryption is set up and initialized, read or fetch instructions from external flash are completely transparent from the MCU core. The user will use the on-the-fly decryption through several use cases in their development cycle. 
first in their own facility, the user should be able to send the firmware or data to external flash from the SN32 non-encrypted. Second, at the subcontractor or CM, the user can now send encrypted firmware data to the external flash to the SN32. The user now can then decide to decrypt the device using standard AES via the on-defined decryption or through a simple dongle. Continuing on with this enhanced security features of our SM32 L5, I will now be discussing our new PKA or Public Key Accelerator IP. The PKA on the SM32 L5 is a new IP that is able to accelerate private key authentication, which greatly reduces CPU processing time. PKA supports many security standards, such as NIST and IEEE, which are widely used in today's market. The PKA has a huge application benefits, in particular when a device is fully connected to the internet. The L5 and the PKA peripheral can be used to establish a secure communication channel, channel from one node to server to provide integrity and authentication via electronic signatures. Please find the table of the private key authenticator processing time on our SM32 L5. Operations like modular exporter operations and ECDSA verification are highlighted here. The table shows their respective computational time in milliseconds depending on the operand length. Continuing on with our security features on the SCM32 L5, let's take a look at the new tamper features of the microcontroller. Originally, the passive tamper pins simply check the static level of the device pins. The active tamper pins allow for a more comprehensive check by continuously sending out a random pattern to the tamper pins, which is then generated by the internal random number generator. This can also detect long pairs of zeros and or ones depending on the software configuration time. This is an overview of the tamper IP block, which includes eight external tamper pins and 16 internal tamper detection sources. The external tamper pins can be configured for edge detection or level detection with or without filtering, or active tamper, which increases the security level by auto-checking that the tamper pins are not externally open or shorted. Any tamper detection can generate an RTC time zone event. In addition, any tamper detection can, be, can erase the backup registers, which are retained in low power modes. Next, I want to discuss the new power control architecture that is new for the SM32L5. Here, we have a snapshot of the current power architecture of the SM32L4 family. Here we have five different VDD rails supporting various domains. I wanted to highlight the VDD and digital lane, which takes in this 1.7 volt to 3.6 VDD and powers the standby circuitry, clocks, and internal voltage regulator. The internal regulator in turn powers the core of the device and flash through the V core rail. For the SM32L5, there is a built-in SMPS step-down converter, which is a highly power-efficient DC-DC non-linear switching layer that improves greatly the low power performance when the VDD voltage level is high enough. The SMPS step-down converter can be switched in bypass mode at any time by the application software. The SMPS block does require a few external components, which are illustrated in the circuitry below. The pinouts for the SM SMPS inputs are available on certain packages of the SM32L5. The SM32L5 has two internal voltage regulators. The main regulator is used for active, sleep, and stop zero modes, while the low power regulator is activated for low power run, low power sleep, and stop one and two along with standby. As mentioned before, the VBAT rail can be used to keep the RTC alive along with preserving a few backup registers. 
the VBAC can be powered by either an external battery or an external super cap. With the L5, depending on the user's output frequency requirement, the main regular can be configured up to three voltage ranges to the VOS bits in the power control register. As you can see, the higher operating frequency, the higher output voltage of the main regular is needed from 1.0 all the way up to 1.28 volts. Now, we will discuss in greater detail the trust zone architecture which is unique to the Cortex M33 core on our L5 device. With the L5, the security architecture is based on ARM V8 main extensions. When the trust zone is enabled, there are two specific units that are able to define permissions on whether they are secure and non-secure. The first is the SAU, the Security Attribution Unit, and the second is the IDAU, the Implementation Defined Attribution Unit. With the SDM32 L5 and Trust Zone fully activated, the big difference between a secure peripheral and Trust Zone aware peripheral is that the secure peripheral has a firewall gate that prevents and protects communication from other parts of the L5 device. Here is a breakdown on all trust zone aware peripherals and how they are connected in the bus matrix via APB or HHG buses. All of the remaining peripherals not listed here are fully securable. For simplicity, please consider the trust zone bit similar to the RDP level and can be fully returned back to original state. Regressing of the trust zone feature or TZN bit can only be done when changing RDP from level one to level zero. In addition, some other security features are also deactivated, like secure inups and watermark memory errors that have been defined. For the next topic, we will now highlight the new flash interface that is present on the SDN32 L5 microcontroller. Here is a memory map of the flash memory architecture that is present on the SN32L5. The L5 is a dual bank cable device that allows read while write access for each of the 256K byte bank segments. The flash memory is segmented and partitioned in 128 pages at two kilobytes per page. For the SN32L5, bank swapping execution is fully supported. In addition, ECC C is supported and we have added another RDP level 0.5 to the L5, which I will highlight in the upcoming slide deck. As mentioned previously, the L5 has added a new RDP level of protection, level 0.5. When level 0.5 is activated and is only available when the trust zone is enabled. The debug access to secure is prohibited debug access to non-secure air is still possible, and non-secure programming is still available on the device. I want to highlight that RDP level 2 is still available on the L5, and this is our recommendation for device security. This further eliminates any type of debug capability, be it through the JTAG or SWD, and is irreversible and cannot be regressed. Now, I will be discussing a new security feature on our SCM32L5, which is our root security service, or better known as RSS. The RSS is a memory segment in the internal bootloader that allows for firmware validation and provisioning. Once a firmware image has been verified, secure APIs in the system memory bootloader can be used to update the internal memory to standard peripheral interfaces such as UART, SPI, and I2C. Here is a breakdown and memory map of the system flash with the RSS. One feature of the RSS allows for the SM32L5 a unique boot entry point and is capable of storing both private and public key device provisioning. 
the bootloader listed in gray still share the same entry points as before, UART, SPY, and USB. An overview of the L5 boot path would depend on the trust zone bit status or TZEN bit. If TZEN or trust zone bit is zero, the L5 can either boot on application code or the bootloader, which is a legacy mode and the RSS is not used. If enabled, the RSS can check the firmware images and validate them before invoking the bootloader to update the flash contents. On to the next topic, SFI or secure firmware injection will be discussed now. SFI can help remedy a problem that most of our customers will face. They do not want their code or firmware to be accessible by anyone. SFI supports loading of a full encrypted firmware files using either the SEM32 bootloader and SFI services, or firmware is decrypted and programmed into the SEM32 user flash. SFI with SEM32 embeds a small certificate that allows the device to be authenticated. New tools like the Trusted Package Creator are able to encrypt the user image with a specific firmware key. DSFI is based on the following features, from providing a secure loader to firmware confidentiality, to allowing device certification to be used with a strong cryptography library. The SCM32 Trusted Package Creator is a new tool to the SCM32 ecosystem that can be used to generate SFI and SMI files with a defined firmware key. This ensures that firmware remains confidential and secure. Trusted Package Creates Creator works both as a standard GUI interface or via command line. This program is PC-based and supported both on Windows and Ubuntu and is included in the SCM32Q Programmer installation package. The SCM32HSM is a secure microcontroller which supports ISO 7816 command format that can be used to securely transfer customer information. After defining the firmware encryption key and encrypting their firmware, the customer can store their encryption key to one or more HSM and sets the number of authorized SFI operations like counter values using the SCM32Q programmer and SCM32 Trusted Package Creator software tools. CMs must utilize the SCM32 HSM to load encryption firmware to the SM2 devices. Each HSM only uh, allows the CM to find number of programming operations before it will reversibly deactivate it. A better way to view the entire root of trust is the following diagram. First, the development starts with the customer firmware and is using the trusted package creator to send the encrypted image to the CM. Information stored on this can include the SCM32 chip certification and private keys. The CM receives the encrypted image along with the HSM module to both validate the image along with control of the number of boards produced. Changing gears and discussing with the SCM32 L5 improvements on security features and IP, I wanted to take the time now to highlight the additions to the SCM32L5 ecosystem offering. The Xcube SB SFU is further expanded with the SCM32L5. The TFM, or Trusted Firmware Framework, offers new features such as secure storage and execution. The diagram on the left shows visually how the L5 is fully hardware partitioned from untrusted and unprivileged segments to segments that are trusted with a secure boot firmware is located and stored. Thanks to our dedicated applications team, the SCM32L5 has been officially announced as the first PSA Level 2 certified MCU. Please follow the link below for more details of the full certification process. Customers would find this certification valuable if their applications 
is looking for a third-party validation of the security architecture and code framework. DS1032 Cube L5 allows the same ecosystem offerings as past devices in our family. Generic middleware such as free RTOS and USB device stacks will be offered along with dedicated middleware such as, such as our USB power delivery drivers and touch sensing library. In terms of peripheral drivers, we'll be offering both HAL APIs, which will allow very simple and portability between the family, also offering our low level or LL APIs, which will offer a more optimized library for more memory sensitive customers. Project examples for each development kit are available with more than 300 specific examples that have been verified on Kyle, IAR, and Cube IDE tool chains. The STM32L5 is fully supported by the STM32 Cube Programmer GUI, which is an easy to use program that can support Flash program via JTAG, SWD, or through the onboard bootloader. The STM32 Q programmer is fully supported on Windows and Linux station platforms. In addition to the flash memory blocks, option bytes can be modified and programmed as well. This tool can be used in conjunction with the STM32 HSM module as stated and discussed earlier in the slide deck. Here, we have our all-in-one STM32 development tool, which is our STM32 Cube IDE. Cube IDE has been fully validated with our STM32 L5 device. A customer can easily start off with the product selected and properly select which peripheral or feature they want to enable and use. After the customer can generate the proper initialization code and begin development using GCC for their toolchain with GDB and open OCD being fully supported for debugging. SDM32 Cube ID is fully supported on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. The SDM32 L5 will be offered in the same three flavors of our evaluation kits. First, the evaluation board which is a full feature board with the highest number of peripherals bonded out supported. Second is our discovery kit, which is a bit more flexible in terms of prototype, but has a small LCD for demo purposes. And last is our basic Nucleo 144 board. All three in, embed the onboard SCLing programmer. All you need for programming is a simple micro USB cable. In addition, customers can use these kits as reference design to begin their application as the schematics, gerbers, and bombs are fully offered and can be downloaded freely on our sd.com website. Here, I wanted to highlight an interesting application using two products from our SD product portfolio, which can be used for a digital signature application. Using a combination of a Nucleo L5 board, X Nucleo NFC expansion board, and an ST25 TV tag, you can build a secured NFC reader and tag solution. This system employs the SCM32L5 microcontroller, ST25R3911B high performance NFC transceiver, and the ST25 TV NSC tag IC with embedded digital signature, tamper detection, and password protection. The Trust 25 products aim to protect the brand at an embedded level. A digital signature is encoded in the IC in a secure location with NST. The algorithm that is used to verify the signature can only be distributed under NDA with ST. 
We use the same secure encoding environment as all other bank-grade personalization of our smart card products. The HSM hardware security module that we use is FIPS 1402 certified. Here we have a block diagram of the ST25 and STM32L5 for digital signature verification. This solution can be used in a device where a disposable component is used. Applications such as a toothbrush, water filter, so on can identify the tag within the disposal component. This not only protects the revenue stream, but also the safety of the end customer. There's also an implication for physical identification as well as such solution can go into a kiosk or a card will identify the user. For more information on our SDM 32 l 5 security offering and NFC solutions, please visit SD.com. Thank you.